Welcome to section three, filtering traffic. In this section, we're going to take a look at BPF syntax, which allows you to limit the packets and frames that are received by your capturing interface. Capture filters, where we're going to take that BPF syntax and apply it to interfaces and show some examples of limiting the captured data from an interface. Display filters, where we're going to limit what is shown to us from a capture, which may have more data than we need. Follow streams, which is a great feature of Wireshark, and allows you to follow a TCP or UDP stream, and it will automatically filter the traffic for you and show you the data enclosed in that conversation. And advanced filtering, creating additional columns, filtering based on certain fields within a packet, things that many people don't know that they can do in Wireshark. BPF syntax. In this video, we're going to take a look at the Berkeley packet filter known as BPF, and its syntax and some of its history. So let's talk about the Berkeley packet filter history. Many years ago, we're talking decades here, every operating system had its own packet filtering API. There's a number of examples listed here, such as Sun, DEC, SGI, Xerox. They all had their own operating systems, and each operating system had its own API for capturing and filtering packets. So when you needed to do network analysis, you had to use their specific software with it built into the operating system, their specific filtering capabilities within the API that they designed. That made it very difficult because depending on the implementation of your network and what different operating systems were involved, you had to know all these different APIs and all of these different filtering rules in order to get anything done. So in 1993, Stephen McCann and Van Jacobson they released a paper titled the BSD Packet Filter, or BPF, and they really outlined the rules and the ideas behind BPF and how it could be a standardized method for filtering captured traffic. It just so happened that it caught on and became very popular, especially as libpcap and winpcap and other libraries out there began to utilize BPF as its standardized filtering system and especially the use of Wireshark nowadays that utilizes those libraries. In order to write BPF, you need to create an expression. And an expression contains one or more primitives. And in BPF, primitives are an ID, such as a name or number, an IP address, an Ethernet address, something like that, plus a qualifier. And a qualifier has three pieces to it. We have the type, the direction, and the protocol. So for a type, it could be an individual host, a network, a port, a port range. The direction can be either the source or the destination, the source or destination, the source and destination, and the protocol, whether it's Ethernet, FDDI, wireless LAN, IP, IPv6 nowadays, ARP, RARP, DECnet, probably not so much, TCP, UDP. You have to define these different pieces that you want, how you want to limit your traffic and the values that go with them, the ID, the name or number, to go along with these qualifiers. So I have some examples here for you so that it can make some more sense as to how to create a BPF expression. The first one is IP host 192.168.1.1. So the IP is the protocol, the host is the type, and the ID is the IP address. So that will filter the traffic for that IP address, whether it's the source or destination that host keyword does both of those for us. Next up I have Ethernet source and a fictitious MAC address. Same idea as IP host. We're defining Ethernet as our protocol, source as the direction, and the MAC address that we're looking for. If you happen to be capturing traffic that has multiple VLANs, such as spanning a port that's a trunk port on a switch, you can specify the VLAN or VLANs. The next example is Ether broadcast. And this one has a special keyword being used of broadcast to tell BPF that we want to filter all of our traffic, whether it's a broadcast of some kind, on layer 2. And my last example is TCP port 80. So we're going to filter that traffic, looking for HTTP traffic most likely, looking for only port 80 of any source destination. Up next is capture filters, where we're going to take this BPF syntax and apply it to interfaces within Wireshark.